If you ever had to explain grading volumes to a non-engineer, well, you know how tricky it can be. That's where cut and fill exhibit becomes your secret weapon. In this video, we'll walk you through the exact steps to create a clean, clear, and professional looking cut and fill exhibit using Civil 3D. You'll learn how to compare surfaces and generate volume data, style your exhibit to highlight cut and fill areas visually, and export your results in a format that actually makes sense to clients and teams. Now, whether you are prepping for a presentation or coordinating with a design team, this workflow is going to save you time and make you look like a pro. So open up Civil 3D and let's build this exhibit from the ground up the right way. In today's video, we are looking at how do we place our cut and fill exhibition in Civil 3D. So for our case, here we have two surfaces. One is the existing ground. So simply this one here, if I was just to click on it, if we orbit, we can just simply see that it's just a blank sheet of mass and this is our surface. While the second one is this, the final power plant area. So if I was just to select on it, uh, let me just hit on escape a couple of times so that I just have one surface selected. If I was just to click on it, if we orbit, we can clearly see that we have one flat graded area. And if you're interested on learning on how to come up with this graded area, I have attached a complete video down in the description, a complete course that you can use, and it's called the Civil 3D Earthworks Pro. Okay, quick heads up. If you are still getting comfortable in Civil 3D or just want a solid foundation, we've got something for you our free Civil 3D Essentials course. It covers all the core tools, workflows, and best practices. Perfect whether you are just starting or need a refresher. And yes, it is completely free. You'll find the link in the description, bookmark it, and check it out right out of this video. So having that said, let me show you how to represent this information in Civil 3D as a pro. So navigate to settings, and under settings, you're gonna find this surface uh, tab just expand the tree and we're going to be using surface style so right click on this click on new so the surface style changes the color and the perception of how the surface is displayed in your civil 3d software so from here we're going to specify the name so let's call it a uh, source card for your case it can be something different or let's say source card ss for surface style and under this we're going to just navigate all the way to display so we have to make sure that our elevation is checked and under analysis, just simply navigate to elevation. And under this, we want to change the color ranges, let's say to rainbow so that we have a barrage of colors and you can obviously change the ranges from here. So for our case, I want us to work with three. So I'll just select three, then hit on apply and hit on OK. Just like that, that one is done. So how are we going to see this specific surface style for our final power plant area and that is what we want to show to our contractor or to our field team so you just simply navigate to this uh, surface here select the surface property and from here we're going to find the surface tiles so you click on this drop down navigate to the one that we have created then hit on apply and just like that we have that application been seen here and you can even move even deeper to analysis. And from here, you can even run this elevation analysis. So let's just change our range, let's say to three, because you had already specified three, that's why you can only see three colors here. Then run the analysis by clicking on this icon here. And you can even specify the tolerances for each and every single place. So you start with the minimum, go to the median, then from the median again, you start here to say the central median, and then you move from the median to the maximum here. And that's simply how it's done. And if you hit on this color scheme, you can obviously change the color. So we can go with a less red color, let's say something of the sort. And for the green, this is fill. We can also go with something like lime. So select that and you can just hit on apply and that's the way it's going to be shown. But if you prefer just having two colors, you can just simply run the same analysis, change this uh, fill uh, color to the same lime color, something of the sort, then hit on apply. And that's simply how the representation of the data will be. So having understood that, let's now look at how do you display the information that you want for this cut and fill data. To do this, it's quite simple. You'll first need to know the volume of cut that you're working with. And how do you know this? It's quite simple, actually. Just simply select on this uh, plant uh, surface that we have here. So select on this, select on tin surface, and this contextual ribbon will pop up. 
So navigate to the analyze panel and you're gonna find this volume dashboard, select on this and the panorama window will pop up. So we need to create a new one. So just simply click on new, specify to be a tin volume. You actually have grid and, and tin. So make sure that you're working with tin and then you can give it a name. So for our case, we can just call it source code, V for volume, or you can call it the way you want. And then the most important things is under here. So you have to make sure that the base surface is existing ground. So select EG. And then the comparison surface is a final finished level. So for our case is a power plant level. Select on that, then hit on okay. And just like that, it has been created. You can obviously play around with the cut and fill factor. This affects the shrinkage and the expansion value of the material that you're using for backfilling or cutting. So from here, if you scroll, you can just simply see how things look like. And it's actually a nice one. We have more or less equal amounts of cut and fill. But if you had crazy numbers, it's quite simple actually to play around with this. Just navigate to the final level, expand the tree, navigate to definition, expand the tree, navigate to edits, right click, click on uh, raise slash lower the surface. So if you want to increase the cut, you just lower it down. So you can input one value, let's say negative 0 0.5 meters for my case, for your case, it can be different. Hit on enter and just like that, we have a change, but you cannot see the data. So you need to select the main uh, surface tree here, rebuild all out of dated items. And just like that, now we have this updated information like this. So now let's display the same information in terms of numbers or values in our drawing. So I'll just simply navigate back to settings. And for our case, this is a label. So expand the label. And for our case, it's a spot elevation. So right click on spot elevation, then just simply navigate to create a new one. So we're gonna create a new spot elevation. We're gonna change the name to, let's say source card SE for spot elevation. And we're gonna jump directly to layout. So under layout, we wanna change the anchor point of our labels. So these are simply our labels here. So I wanna change it from mid right to mid center and also from the attachment of our text to mid center so that it will be attached exactly to that point of cut or fill. And after that, it's just a matter of playing around with the contents that will be displayed. So make sure that you select everything like this uh, these properties will jump automatically to elevation and make sure you have selected like that. The units that we are working with are meters, but for your case, you can select the one that you prefer. So meters is all right with me. And my precision is to the second decimal place. I'll change that. And then I'll also change my sign. So I want either to be a plus or minus, depending if it's cut or fill, but you can obviously play around with this even further, depending with what you want. You can always come up with an expression under this specific area and assign it to this specific item, depending with what you want. But for our case, this is okay. I'll just simply hit on apply, then hit on okay. So now let's place our annotations. You navigate to annotate tab, navigate to add labels, navigate to surface. And then for our case, we are working with spot elevation on grid because we wanna create a grid system on this entire area. So select the specific surface that you want or hit on enter to select from list. So let's uh, select from list. We wanna go with the volume so that we just know the amount of cut and fill. But if you go with this, it is just gonna simply show you the elevations. But for our case, the elevations are not important for now. We wanna just know the quantities. So hit on okay. And after that, just specify the grid base point. So we're clicking on two opposite sides of the diagonal of this rectangle. So one of the point can be here, then specify the grid rotation. I'll just leave it as zero. So I'll hit on enter. The spacing as five meters for my case, that's okay. I'll hit on enter the Y spacing as five, and then I'll specify the opposite uh, right-hand corner, just like that, and our system has to be created. I'll hit on enter because my case, I'm satisfied with this. I don't need to change. So the answer is no, I'll hit on enter. And just like that, you can simply zoom in and see that all this data is being shown in real time of each and every single area that we have for cut and fill. And that's simply how we show this information. You can obviously play around with this information even further, depending with what you want. So I'll just simply select this specific tin surface, the one that we have here, and you can just simply see how it looks like. And it looks uh, simply like this. So we have some areas of cut, some areas of fill. So this is a, a cut area. Some of it is a fill area. Some is a cut area again. So that is the information that we are just simply representing here.
And once you have done that, you can obviously now send this information to the team of engineers that they are at the site or surveyors and also the borough pit teams and they can use this information to do even further. And you are not limited to this. You can obviously play around with so many other settings. Under this, you can obviously come up with a certain expression. And under this, you can specify if uh, you are working with a cut area, what will be shown. If you're working with a fill area, what will be shown. So it's totally allowable. But just to keep it simple, you can work with this. And you can obviously play around again with the display that you have under this. So let's say... Uh, make sure you select the correct surface. So I'll just navigate back to my prospector tab. I'll select this power plant. So I'll select this on surface properties. You can obviously increase the analysis just to be more precise, hit on apply. And that is what you'll be having here. And if you're interested to know how to now generate the quantities, how to send the Excel document, kindly check down in the description where we have the link to a very short course that you can understand Earthworks as a professional. And there you have it. Your cut and fill exhibit is ready to go. Whether you are sharing it with a client team or just making your grading designs easier to understand, this technique is a must have in your Civil 3D toolkit. If you want to keep building your skills, don't forget to check out our free Civil 3D Essentials course. The link is right below in the description and also in the pinned comment. Now we want to hear from you. Which Civil 3D tool should we cover in the next video? Drop your ideas in the comments. I'm always listening and I read every single comment. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.